Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're going to create the marginal histogram. In this video, it's really not too difficult to create, um, but it requires us stitching together multiple parts, and that's the challenge. Individually, not too difficult. Uh, let's take a look at it. Here it is. What we're going to create is using Tableau Superstore 2020.4, and we'll just see it really at the heart of it is this heat map, and we can see sales in this heat map by year and by subcategory. We also see the totals for the bars as well. So it's, uh, and years. So it's sort of three components stitched together, but it also just because of the way Tableau works and we want these values at the bottom here, it ends up being four sheets and we have to stitch it together very carefully. I'm going to show you the tips that I have for creating really beautiful marginal histograms and if you don't use the tips what'll it'll actually end up looking like so let's you know put it together show you the before get to the after which we see here let's get started we can go to a new sheet and first we'll create that heat map that we saw we'll find order date we'll just click and drag that out on columns again connected to tableau superstore 2020.4 using tableau 2020.4 and we're going to find our subcategory and we'll place that out onto rows. From here, we got two dimensions. We got one on rows, one on columns. We can go find sales and place that onto color. And with that measure, it automatically creates that heat map. Let's just have this take up the entire view for now. Just some minor formatting. Let's right click on subcategory. Let's hide those labels and right click on order date and hide the field labels for the columns and then one last minor format to start with let's just format and we'll set our alignment here on subcategory to the right so that the text sort of is right next to the labels here so that's the start of this visualization we're just going to right click on that sheet so let's call this by the way the sheet itself we can call it heat map and then I'm just going to right click and duplicate that sheet twice. So heat map once, heat map twice. And on the first one, we can just take sales, leave it there on color, and we'll also add it out onto columns. And we'll remove year from our view. You'll notice that on our example, they're sorted. So let's also make sure our values are sorted both on the heat map and this bar chart. So we'll just call this bar chart dash subcat for subcategory we'll sort our values let's right click and uncheck show header we won't need that to show up on our marginal histogram we need to sort our subcategories as well so we can go back to our heat map and we can right click on subcategory and rows choose sort and then we're going to sort on a field with sales sum descending and that's it now there'll be perfectly aligned in terms of the values. Very important though that we get that right. Otherwise, it'll be confusing and wrong for your end user. We definitely wouldn't want that. On this other marks card, the heat map number two, call it bar chart year. So this will be a bar chart, a vertical bar chart for year. We can just take sales once again, and this time we can place it on rows and we'll remove subcategory from our view. Tableau defaulted to line here. We're going to do right click and change that to a bar. Or a, right click on the, the headers and uncheck show header for both of them right away because they're really not going to show up on our view. And then the last thing we need to do is on this marginal histogram, we actually have a fourth sheet just for the labels. That's because we can't get the labels to default at the bottom in Tableau. So we just need another sheet. And the, the, the setup of it's frankly pretty easy. We just go find order date again, place order date out on columns and then repeat and place order date from orders onto text and then you'll have those labels we can just right click on the header uncheck show header and we're going to leave it as is just these four values showing up across once we have these four sheets created oh by the way let's just call this labels once we have these four sheets we can create a new dashboard and we're going to start bringing all these together this is the hard part we have four separate sheets to bring them together we're going to use containers it's very important in like when I'm organizing my dashboards, I use containers all the time. Bring out vertical and start with a vertical container down here in objects. Click, drag, and add that onto your view. Next, Tableau gets a little bit funky when you're working with empty containers and placing other containers in it, which is what we're going to do. 
So instead of doing that, let's just take a blank container and fill this container up. So now we have a blank value. We'll use this later. We won't end up deleting it off our view. But we can take now a horizontal container and place that inside that vertical container underneath that blank. Now that we have that in here, we're going to take first our bar chart for year and place that in there. And that's all that's going in for now. Don't worry about adding anything else. This blank is actually going to be in here later and fill in some space. Next, we're going to add another horizontal container inside that vertical container. So we'll have two horizontal containers, one above and below the other in this setup. Add that second one in. Now we can add the heat map and our bar chart subcategory to the right. We've got all these titles, by the way. We don't want these titles. You can just right click, uncheck, and hide these titles. We don't want them on our view at all. Uh, now that we have these two containers in, by the way, you can just take this blank container and put it inside the, um, the, and see, this is what happens sometimes. Containers get a little funky. Okay, so for whatever reason, I lost my container that I had uh, put that in there earlier. So I'm gonna bring out another vertical container and I'm gonna put inside that vertical container my bar chart and my blank. There we go. Now you can like, right, we can just start aligning some of these values just a little bit. Uh, and maybe I'm just gonna double click and I'm going to uh, change this height. I like to use the fixed edit height buttons here. I'm gonna set this value, by the way, to say 100. Now we can see those bars, this marginal histogram starting to come together. The labels here, we don't need 2020 showing up on our heat map. So we're going to uncheck show header. A lot of things we're hiding. And then on this bar chart for subcategory, we don't need those labels as well. Let's just start getting things very close to each other. When we added our sheets to our view, by the way, they added this padding. We don't need the padding. So we're going to set all of our padding on all of our sheets back down to zero here. And it's still not going to be enough even when we get rid of all this padding, zero, 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 they're still just barely touching, barely put together, um, right? Let's make some space for our labels at this point. And somehow we need to move our bar chart over. The best way to do that, in my opinion, is you just click and then you change your outer padding here. So we'll just uncheck equal sides. Let's set this to like 150 and that gets us pretty close. In fact, if we wanted to, we could just drag this value backwards and match it. And we're probably better off doing it that way. And then again, this is just some slight adjustments. Uh, we don't need this, this container anymore showing up there. Um, again, it's always going to be some adjustments that we're going to do on the fly. We're almost there in terms of the histogram itself. We want to put our labels down on the bottom. The way we'll do that, once again, we'll add another horizontal container onto our view then we'll place our labels inside that container. Right click, uncheck, hide title. And uh, this you know, fits a little bit awkwardly in this space, but we'll work with it for now. Just like with all the others, remove our outer padding. Let's get rid of that. And we just need to pop these over a little bit. If you remember, we popped it over 150 before, so we'll do the exact same setup here and we can see now those labels are pretty much in place. Uh, I could just, if I double click here, just sort of resize some, some of my view here, because really I just want to get things organized more than anything. It's just a, an exercise of fixing things up. So we're basically there, and this is the unformatted version. This is what I would typically see from the average analyst who's working in Tableau. Maybe we don't need to have our dashboard this wide. We could probably just say, like let's change our width here to like 600 there. Um, yeah, we got a little extra space here. But what do you do to really spice this up? That's the question. How do we make this way better? How do we make this marginal histogram pop? And that's with formatting. Formatting is the key to all of this game that we do in data viz design. We just right click on each of these sheets. I'll show you what to do. Simple on each of the bar charts. Classic statement of what I've said in the past, remove your grid lines, make sure those are turned off, remove your zero lines, remove your axis rulers, and remove your axis ticks. All those are gone, that's perfect. You're gonna repeat that and I'm, for both bar charts, like I said, 
grid lines, zero lines, axis rulers, axis ticks. Make sure they're all turned off. I'll say every video practically that you'll hear from me. And the same with the labels down below, frankly. We don't need those showing up. So grid lines, zero lines, axis rulers, axis ticks. You're probably going to be like, Luke, we get the point, but I really need to hammer it home. You'll see we still have some lines. Those are dividers. So we can get rid of our row dividers on this view. Now, everything starting to really come together. Uh, it doesn't look like it's changed much, but it has changed quite a bit. We have two more tips on the formatting for your histogram. You're going to format and you're going to change your grid. We do want a grid on this one. If you change your level, by the way, you'll see there's our grid lines showing up. But what we want to do in this example is we want to show all white and then choose like the second second sized space there. So again, white and not the thinnest, but the next over. And that'll actually make those grids distinct from themselves. And you know, we finally have a, a pretty decent looking marginal histogram. But the color's wrong. We have, frankly, two different colors showing up on our view. So when you're using these, make sure that you select the right color. Don't know what that was all about. We'll just come in here and we're going to edit. And I'm going to choose this purple. I like using this purple for my histograms. I think it's not too offensive when it comes down to it. Um, and right, just it's a lot of repeating that same process. Right click and choosing that purple. And the thing about using this purple is my axes are not technically the same, right? These values are not equally representative. But the nice part about this visualization is that it doesn't need to be. It's those bar heights are all relative and we're using color relatively. We just need to normalize it in some context. And that's the key. But frankly, given that we have size, we don't even need to put color on these. But I think it just adds that extra pop to make it look nice and clear and provide a ton of context. Anyway, now that we've formatted our uh, marginal histogram, you'll notice it really does pop quite well. And, uh, and that's the game. That's the marginal histogram. The marginal histogram is just all about making two bar charts, a heat map, and some labels for the bottom, and formatting, and getting all the formatting right, removing all the padding, and adding in the spacing so that each of the cells individually pop off our view. Anyway, that's this video. We will catch you in the next one. Uh, where we'll talk more heat maps. Anyway, we'll see you again. Like, subscribe, add comments, and uh, check out datacoach.com. We'll see you in the next one.